Yo, yo, what up, man? Hello, hello. We might have uh, a really short meeting today. Um, uh, Alolita has a conflict for half of this, and there's some issue in AWS that's taking out Michael and uh, Bartek has the physical therapy going longer than expected. So we can All have good. a little or something, but um, and we can use the time however we like, I suppose. But our our attendance from, from folks is going to be really low today. Hello. Howdy. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey there. Hello. Hey, all. Hello. Uh, so I guess we are at three or four minutes past. Uh, this is a, um, a CNCF sponsored uh, recording and event. So the CNCF code of conduct applies. Um, and we always say that and uh, we'll continue to. Um, so the other chairs as well as our tech lead are all indisposed today unexpectedly. Um, so we have kind of a, a, an open agenda. We can, we can quit early and return time or we can talk over some of the stuff that's been happening um, in parallel. Uh, I'll send out, if folks don't have it, here's a link to the meeting doc. Feel free to sign in. And um, as usual, uh, the agenda for this meeting is completely open. So if there's anything people want to talk about or mull about or, or even just, you know, um, um, chat about if it's not super serious, that's, that's fine. Um, so with that, uh, is there anyone who has never been here before that wants to introduce themselves? Hi, that would be me. Uh, my name is Antu and I'm very new to the open source community. I have used products from it, um, track it for years, but I've worked for a company that didn't really participate or put, you know, require major approval to share code. And so, 
but things are changing. And my interests are, I used to work for Cisco and then Cray Supercomputer, and then recently the background the networking cloud foundation, cloud infrastructure. Cool. Um, well, welcome. Uh, did anybody else have audio distortion there, or was it just me? Yeah, it was distorted a bit. Okay. Uh, can you repeat the last line, uh, Antu? I don't think we heard uh, something after, after Cray, and then it, it garbled. Oh, oh. Um, I, I worked for Cisco for 10 years, and then Cray for about a year, and then VMware for a year and a half. Uh, I'm part of the great resignation. Um, but my background is in networking and software defined networking. And more recently, um, Kubernetes CNI. So it led me to this, you know, tags and, and observability as part of that. Super. Well, welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, in the, in the chat, uh, in the Zoom chat, there's a link to uh, our, our document. You can feel free to sign in. Uh, is there anyone else before we cover the administrivia in that open floor? All right. Um, so we were going to have a visitor today that was going to, you know, we have kind of an open agenda because Scott Rigby um, had, we had planned on having him come. He'll be coming to our next meeting uh, on the 21st, the third Tuesday. Uh, and He's from the Tag App Deploy uh, 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 group, uh, and they have a working group there called the GitOps Working Group, and they have launched um, something called Open GitOps, um, uh, and there's a whole work stream there. And uh, in discussion with the TOC uh, and Chris and some other folks, they had all sort of recommended that we, uh, the observability tag, reach out to the app deploy tag to get some some guidance on how to launch something uh and we'll get to that in a second uh and sort of how to do the policy and the governance piece so that we launch something that is sustainable uh and is community driven uh so um he sends his regrets uh, uh he had a scheduling thing on his side that um uh, in, in any event uh, he'll be coming uh next next week uh, in two weeks rather um uh so last uh, last meeting, the second thing I have in here, uh, there was a couple of questions about how folks can contribute, what things can they pick up and do. Um, uh, I put in a link. We, we tag a bunch of issues as help wanted. Those are great places to start uh, for pretty much anyone. Again, um, this is a, a community driven group uh, that's that's vendors, uh, end users, as well as project uh, maintainers and members. Uh, so. Um, any of those issues are a great place to start. Uh, some of them uh, will be covered uh, in the Observe K8's uh, work stream that we'll get to in a second. Uh, uh, third, uh, there's an update from Bartek, uh, who sends his regrets as well. Um, he's finished his review of the white paper. I think Richie still has a few things. Um, uh, and. Uh, and if anybody else wants to put in comments, uh, the link is there, it's still open, but I think uh, uh, from, from what uh, from what Bartek said, uh, both privately as well as in channel, um, you know, that's approaching doneness and we can put it out for public comment uh, and then publish it. Um, and the only other thing that I can mention is just a brief update. Uh, so uh, we, we met last week, uh, to talk about uh, Observe K8s, which is a working group uh, that we're launching. Um, there's a working doc there. Uh, anyone is welcome to contribute to it if you're interested in it. Basically, um, the document is sort of form uh, uh, the charter, if you will, or, or sort of what it is, the scope of it, and such. Um, I think a good chunk of the help wanted issues and some of the issues that we've defined uh, in GitHub can be satisfied. Or, or you know, done in the vehicle that is that working group, uh, and that's the working group that we're looking to get some guidance uh, and learnings from the app deploy tag on how to go about it procedurally, logistically, etc. Um, uh, I think I mentioned it la uh, last meeting too, but we've secured the domain names that are interesting, as well as the GitHub org, which is right now empty on purpose. <laughs> um, 
so that you know we can launch it uh, as a group uh, once we have some consensus and, and a shared understanding. Um, there's a doodle that went out. We're going to meet on Thursday, uh, and then we'll get into a regular, probably weekly cadence. And I'm going to try to find a time that's good for West Coast people and and you and folks in, in the EU and everywhere in between. So that might mean we have two different times or something, but we're still sorting that. Um, Again, that's all I really had on the agenda from my side. Um, however else we want to spend our time is is how, how we'd like to. Uh, does anyone have uh, questions or things that they want to talk about or cover or put on put on the agenda for today? So this is um, Eric. I attended uh, last time for the first time, and I'd be curious to hear more about the white paper. I, I don't know a lot about it. Um, I think you talked about it last time a little bit. But if you could just give a little background on what it is, that'd be really helpful for me. Uh, sure. Is there anyone here that's been working on that? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so earlier in the year, uh, some end users got together uh, and decided to create a white paper that covers, um, you know, defining some some terms uh, and providing, particularly for folks new to the space or new to the domain. Um, Maybe not like a full in-depth Rosetta Stone, but certainly covering the major topics like you know what are logs, what are traces, um, etc. Um, and and really, it, it was sort of a um, and for some of the original folks uh, are on leave now, uh, so it's been a bit quiet. Uh, but uh, we've had a, a number of contributors to it, and it's been hammered out over over time. Uh, again, uh, Michael Hasselblas uh, and 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 some others have been. Um, uh, helping to shepherd it as well. Uh, apparently there's an issue in AWS and US East One. So I think that's where a bunch of people are <laughs> mitigating that uh, or dealing with it. Um, but uh, but yeah, so so the white paper uh, has been sort of uh, slowly um, percolating <laughs> and marinating. Um, and I, Bartek just finished his review. He's our tech lead uh, and Richie, one of the other chairs, uh, Richie Hartman uh, from Grafana. Uh, he's in the middle of doing a review and we're, we're approaching where we'll put it out for public comment and public review. Uh, and, and, and when that's done, it goes to the TOC to have them sort of bless it, right? Um, uh, and that would be our first working group that produced something from, from the tag uh, to date. So, you know, over the last year, year and a half, a lot of the activities in the tag well, for the first year where there was a backlog of project review and incubation uh, due diligence documents that we worked on. Uh, and, you know, we, we filled kind of the rest of the time over the course of the summer and the spring, really, you know, highlighting um, interesting observability projects uh, and, and chatting about various topics in, in, in like that. Uh, I think the Observe K8's working group is the first working group that's just, that's not like a paper, but actually um, something that is clonable, you know, that's actually running, that people can interact with. Um, and I'm excited for that. Uh, but th does that help provide some context, uh, Eric? Yeah, I, I, I guess what was, what's the purpose of the white paper and maybe what's lost on me? Is it just to be an introduction to this tag and the terms or is it, a guidance on like how to actually do observability among, among different projects. Oh, I've not looked at it, not, but I will take a look at it if there's a link to it. Uh, yes, it's in the um, it's in the Google Doc. Um, okay. It's, um, uh, there's a there's a PR out uh, with a lot of the comments that have happened in there. Uh, so maybe for for other folks, if they have the same question, I can cover that a little bit. Um, one of the purposes of the tag, and, and a lot of this is laid out in our charter, is really to to provide. Um, to provide, you know, neutral, uh, perhaps not authoritative, but certainly trustable um, guidance, you know, in, in all directions, and one and one of those is to the to, to newcomers to the space, uh, end users that might just be getting into, you know, cloud native uh, architectures and designs in general, uh, and so you know we were looking, for, we had some folks that wanted to do some writing, uh, and some folks, you know, that wanted to produce a white paper uh, that would really serve primarily newcomers uh, to the to, to, to the observability space. You know, many of the folks that um, are actively engaged in this domain are running projects 
or our vendors who are you know deeply steeped in in all of this right their vernacular is expert level uh, and so we wanted to have something where somebody if they kind of tripped over the tag or if they took on a new role and they have to you know a monolith was moved to a bunch of microservices and you know they, they need to observe it, they need to understand how it's working or how it's not working. Uh, this might be a place for them to start. Uh, so it, it seemed like low hanging fruit and not controversial. Uh, so, so the audience is really, I think, focused more outwardly to beginners or to folks new uh, to, to the space. It's less about the tag itself. Uh, and another aspect of, of this group is that we're not, you know, there's not the CNCF and by extension, the TOC and these technical advisory groups are not kingmakers, right? So there, there's no like opinionated, this is how you do it. And if it's not this way, you don't, it, it's the wrong way, right? The, the, there's not that sort of thing. It tries to be a little more generic um, and, and just inform about, you know, what are the nouns? <laughs> you know, what are the common workflows? What are the common concerns? Uh, so that if you're just starting, you have a, a place to start. Lastly, I'll say out of that, I think there's a number of terms that we can pull out of that white paper uh, or, or that could be contributed to the glossary project. There's a CNCF glossary of terms. Um, I believe it's CNCF, uh, I can find it. I think it's cncf.glossary, uh, slash glossary. Uh, so, I don't know if that was too verbose, but um, that's that's sort of the, um, the goal. No, thank that particular. No, that, that makes a lot more sense. Are you still looking for feedback? Because I could take a look yes. at it and just provide a outside observer new to this tag feedback. That might be the best kind of feedback. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to find your own commas and, and when a bunch of experts write stuff for beginners, sometimes you actually need people who haven't seen it before with fresh eyes. So that would be appreciated. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it this week. Yeah, it's a tag observability up uh, uh, poll 51, I believe, and, and there's an issue uh, linked from there, and there's a fairly long thread. Um, it started out as a as a Google Doc, right, and and it's been moved to Markdown um, as we approach publishing it. Full uh, fifty one. That's impressive memory. I'm looking at the doc. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just said thank you. <laughs> yeah, I should play a little more cool, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So um, again, we have a. a is there anything folks want to talk about? We could really cover just about anything. Um, I feel a little flat footed as as at the 11th hour, we had folks with content uh, uh, give their regards uh, or regrets rather. So Matt, you've been uh, facing it with uh, bravery. So uh, well done on uh, handling it so far. 20 minutes into the uh, meeting and uh, having very good uh, agenda and coverage so far. I want to bring, <laughs> if, if there is time, uh, something is. Uh, pretty, uh, it might be a red tape, but uh, I've been encountering that. We've been chatting over the, over the Slack channel for that, on that. Uh, several of us have been uh, struggling with the uh, calendar. Uh, and I've, I've been wondering if anyone has managed to resolve that. It's obviously beyond the, this specific tag, but given that people yeah. want to uh, have this specific tag, I'm raising it here. If, uh, any advice on this one? Yeah, this is the issue that doesn't seem to want to die. I, I, I suspect what's been happening is people duplicated individual events to their calendars like a long time ago that were recurring. And we used to meet every other Tuesday, right? Uh, but we, we really wanted to be in alignment with the overall cadence of the TOC uh, and, and the other kind of groups. And, and, and so I would say six months ago or something, five months ago, uh, we switched to meeting on the first and third Tuesdays of every month. Because some months actually have five Tuesdays and then things get out of sync. Um, and so there was general malaise about that. So um, the, the CNCF calendar, I believe is up to date. That's that's what I what I use. But for folks that might still have a calendar, uh, rather a recurring meeting from long long ago, uh, that's that's sort of where the where the, the the miscommunication is. And unfortunately, it's not something we can fix centrally, right? It's it's things that are living in other people's calendars. Um, okay, so just to uh, follow up on this one, the calendar, the CNCF calendar contains is essentially all the meetings of all the CNCFs, all the tags, all the SIGs, all the working groups, and any other creature within the CNCF. Is there yeah. any way to just 
import the recurring meeting of the uh, tag observability. In this case, obviously, I need it for some other meetings, but I guess yeah. the patent will, will work for others as well. I haven't found a way to make it recurring. Um, you can you can go into the Google Calendar and duplicate the event to your calendar, um, but we can take an action item again to follow up with Amy. She just sent in Slack a Talkify, which I've never seen. I, believe, I, believe, I think that's how they're managing the calendar. So that might provide something a little more direct. Uh, I do apologize for anybody that showed up or the wrong time or, or what, what seemed to be the right time. Um, I'm pretty sure if you duplicate the recurring event, it will just, I mean, and it also is the same event every time. So I think you can just duplicate it and it should be fine. Or at least um, I worked on my calendar or it's worked so far. I, so I, I just deleted, I, the, I deleted the old one and then duplicated the new one after they changed it to a new time. And so far it's been fine. I, I think I did the same. I think I had to duplicate the two though, the one for the first Tuesday and the one for the third Thursday, uh, third Tuesday. And yeah. I think I've been okay the last couple of months after doing that. Yeah. It's like a single event, not recurring, and you manually turned it from a one timer to a recurring? No, I, I think I was able to, when I, I basically took the link to the CNCF calendar and imported it into Google, and that gave me everything. And then I just clicked on the specific meetings and duplicated it to my other local calendar. And then, oh, I think and then it, deleted the, uh, the, and then just the, the full calendar. the CNCF calendar, okay. and then um, it okay. kept the recurring. Yeah, I, I think part of the problem might be too that like in Google Calendar, you can set up recurrences, but there's not a neat and tidy way to set it up for like the first and third Tuesday, for example. It, it wants to do like every other. And that, that got us into trouble before because sometimes we would have meetings, you know, three in a month, sometimes two in a month. And we, we just- So just uh, maybe offering in the, in the vein of uh, automation, observability, and, uh, and yeah. uh, virtualization, and, and the rest of the buzzwords that we're uh, representing here as part of the mandate, is there a way to just send uh, an invite that people can just import, even if we just generate it out of the uh, generic calendar, but just for the sake of this uh, uh, distinguished forum or? Uh... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm just asking openly, obviously, that Matt just, just not putting you on the spot, just brainstorming a, a simple way, especially yeah. for the ones who are out of the loop, maybe, and not involved as, as tightly and may miss out on this uh, call. Uh, I'm putting it to the notes. Uh, I'm taking an action, create a calendar that's free of drama. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we'll, that's the perfect phrasing. <laughs> yeah, um, again, uh, right, so uh, hopefully, you know, we can we can do that. I did also put a link into the actual. I've never seen this Talkify.com. Yeah, I'm just looking at this this while you're um, uh, So it, I think there's a there's a little save button at the top, a green button when you go to that link. Looks like a little three and a half inch floppy. If anybody remembers those, um, <laughs> <laughs> and that will let you get an ICS or you know uh, uh, something that you can import to Google. Just bear in mind that that Tokify is for the first Tuesday and not the third Tuesday. Correct. So yeah. Another one for the third Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Google. Uh, try, trying it as we speak just to validate. On mine, it opens up as a do not repeat event. Uh, so I guess it will again need to change to every, you know first Tuesday or something like that. But so I, I can do that again. I'm just looking for a more sy systematic solution that we can then distribute among the uh, broader team. Some of the audience is not uh, uh, more, more yeah. following on the uh, follows on the uh, on the Slack and things like that, just to make sure that everyone is on the on yep. the loop on this one. So we'll, we'll fix something and we're going to start using the mailing list more. Um, I, I will freely admit I have not hardly used it nearly enough. Um, and I sometimes forget that many people um, use email. My, my email has just so much email. So uh, <laughs> for me, Slack is cleaner, but, um, but we will, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can resolve this and then send something out to the mailing list. Um, Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks a lot uh, Matt, for helping with this. Yeah. Um, you know, while, while we've got you here, do, do you want to talk a little bit about sort of the interview series that you've been doing for the last, I think, year or more? Um, Germain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
No worries. So, uh, first of all, uh, whoever doesn't know me, my name is uh, Dotan, Dotan Horowitz, and I, uh, uh, the day job is uh, as a developer advocate at logs, uh, logs.io. Um, and I'm also a member here of, uh, of, uh, in the tag and some other uh, relevant groups uh, in the open source, uh, both in the CNCF and, and others, uh, like OpenSearch, but uh, mainly in the observability domain. And, uh, part of my activity uh, in the observability domain is a uh, community podcast that I started uh, over uh, about a, a year and a half ago uh, during the COVID when I was uh, uh, trying to get, uh, carry on with uh, some of the activities that have been going on in the community in a virtual form. Um, and essentially, a monthly uh, episode. Uh, by the way, the podcast is called Open Observability Talks. So, uh, and as the name suggests, the topic uh, is uh, observability with a focus of uh, open source, open standards, uh, open communities, of course, and, uh, and uh, the related DevOps practices. Uh, and in each episode, uh, I have the honor of uh, get, having a guest from the community or from end user or from vendor, but someone who has a, a direct uh, a connection to one of these uh, aspects. Uh, Bartek, for instance, that you all know, uh, uh, appeared on the on the podcast, and Richie, and others. I hope to get uh, Matt uh, to agree to participate one of these days. I think he can uh, contribute a lot. And this is, by the way, also a, an open invitation for uh, for anyone uh, here in this call and in whoever also listens to the recording offline. If you have something meaningful that you can share uh, about a specific open source project that you're involved in, about activities even here in the uh, tag observability um, and, and anything that is uh, related to this domain. Also, uh, end user experience, uh, how you struggled with uh, challenges around observability, how you resolved them, uh, anything that you think is meaningful. Um, uh, I'd be glad, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can uh, catch me on uh, on the CNCF Slack, uh, at Horovitz, H-O-R-O-V-I-T-S, or on Twitter, or in GitHub, or essentially probably everywhere, uh, at Horovitz. Um, and the topics are, are varied. For example, uh, next week, I'm going to talk um, with uh, uh, Frederic, uh, the surname is a bit difficult to pronounce, but he's the CEO and founder of uh, Polar Signals. If you uh, if you're familiar with this company, uh, he's also uh, the person behind the Parka, uh, open, new open source project that is around the continuous profiling, uh, which is also going to be a significant uh, part of the conversation. Probably talking about uh, the signals of observability going beyond the three pillars of observability into newer signals and the contribution. What's the gap that is that necessitates more signals and, and what uh, what can be resolved with these signals and so on so interesting uh, um, a discussion that also pertains to many other open source projects like uh, a pixie uh, project uh, that has been uh, released also in the last half a year we also had uh, someone from pixie uh, labs uh, in, in the podcast to, to discuss those uh, topics of ebpf um, so i'm just giving uh, examples from these recent topics but really uh, it could be a lot of things and because as we know, and you're all experts in this, observability means so much in so many angles to uh, so many uh, organizations. So uh, beyond the well-discussed topics of uh, logging and metrics and traces and this tool and that, there's so many aspects that can be discussed. So um, really looking forward to, uh, to having more, uh, more guests. Uh, and continuing, and again, if you have anything, if you don't want to appear on the show, but you have some feedback that you want to uh, share with me or uh, any ideas, um, uh, anything really, and I'd be more than happy to uh, to work with you on that. Cool. Um, yeah, I, we've been playing uh, Slack tag. Uh, I, I'd love to. I'd love to be a guest if you'll have me um, in the future sometime. I've, I've actually been quietly, sort of stealthily incubating. Uh, an open source project in the observability domain that's still um i'm still in benevolent dictator initial implementation mode <laughs> but uh, uh perhaps when that when that stuff comes out a little bit it, it might be more interesting to talk then but, um, great definitely uh, if it's your your own baby and your own project definitely curious first of all for me to hear about that and definitely to uh, spread the word out uh yeah it's it's kind of me journeying out on graph theory because i haven't in a while 
and I wanted to. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I put a uh, I put a link to uh, in the in the working doc for the meetings as well as the the chat to your podcast. So I've been listening to it for a while. It's great. Um, Thanks. Uh, in a somewhat related bit, um, you know, some of those uh, initial issues we've had for a long time um, since the summer, really. Uh, some of them cover, you know, uh, pretend, you know, we have a YouTube channel now sponsored by the CNCF. We've had it for a while. Um, and if anyone wants to, you know, make content, uh, be, be a video podcasting star uh, like Dotan, um, uh, I don't know that if I would make the best one. So I'm, I, I've not, but um, it's a it's an easy opportunity as well. Um, everything from figuring out, you know, um, what the interviews or talks might be about. Uh, producing content, uh, producing a program to, to kind of plan out that stuff, you know, all that stuff's up for grabs. Uh, yeah. Daniel, and this I... maps to issue 49, if you're already there, if anyone wants to have a look, I'll just post it here also on the uh, uh, chat. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I hope that I didn't mistake the... Uh... That's the one. Yeah. So um, if you have anything to contribute also uh, in terms of ideation of what would be the format or anything else really uh, that's that'd be a good place to uh, start yeah, my, my kids asked if they could do it but they don't have the right <laughs> expertise they just but they would like to talk it to instead of youtube they to would like TikTok, to tiktok or instagram or <laughs> uh, something other than minecraft um is there anything else i don't want to waste people's time um i'm, I'm you know again it's an open floor uh we, we had a, a bit of a gap so um you know, uh, like, like, for example, Eric, you said your, your, your new, uh, I think you came last, last week, which was also a very, a quite, quite, quite a small meeting with, with a, uh, uh, is there anything in particular, for example, you'd like to work on, or you'd like to get out of, out of this? I don't want to put you on the spot. But, um, I just, I'm, I'm here just on behalf of my company to just try to learn to see where there might be opportunities where we could contribute. And that's why I'm here. Great. Uh, yeah, I mean, check out the issues in GitHub. Um, and it doesn't just have to be the help wanted ones. And anyone should be able to permission wise to, to create new issues. Again, um, it's sort of a coalition of the willing. Um, uh, many, many folks are actually paid to work on observability. Um, I, I was an, I, I've been an end user for a number of years uh, of all this stuff. So that's how I kind of fell into this. Um, uh, but yeah. Is there, by the way, if, if there is a bit of time, just uh, in terms of, I know that some uh, people uh, met around uh, uh, reInvent just using the, the purpose for a face-to-face. -face. I was wondering if, I, I wasn't able to attend, but I was wondering if there has been any gathering uh, of, the, of this forum or a subset of the forum, and if so, maybe interesting to uh, catch up on this. You know, um, we had, actually, I think we had some issues around it. We had hoped to do something like that at, um, KubeCon. I was at KubeCon in LA and Aulita and I gave a short talk. It was only 27 minutes covering the tag. Um, but with the travel restrictions in place, uh, you know, a lot of folks couldn't make it. So we actually didn't do that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to any of the folks that were in reInvent. So if they did meet, that's awesome. I'd love to get a readout of it and, and see if anything uh, came of it. And moving forward, I mean, I have to keep hope alive that, you know, uh, people will take take some take some vaccinations and the world will open back up but we do have um you know one of the one of the things that we had identified last year actually as a worthwhile activity for for the tag is to create materials uh, uh to help uh, people have local observability meetups in their in their own locales you know we've had folks come saying that they want to do specifically this um abroad you know all over the place, not 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 just North America, obviously. Uh, and so, um, you know, making a kit that might have some, you know, some boilerplate slides, some boilerplate content, um, and, and whatever else would help someone start a local meetup, you know, because reInvent comes once a year, you know, KubeCon comes once or twi twice a year, or once a year for some folks, um, depending on ability to travel, right? So, um, so that that that, for example, is is something that we could do uh and and uh contributions welcome uh many companies i mean i'm just outside boston uh, in cambridge mass many companies at least in cambridge have like public spaces for that kind of thing and and they've been closed 
you know, for the last year. But um, I think as things open up, we can really position ourselves to kind of augment sort of the mostly vendor and mostly, you know, project um, membership of the tag today with with more a more grassroots practitioner and and user uh, uh, community and, and we can have sets of meetups you know and and um, and that can bubble interesting things up uh, we could we could give provide a platform so that those individual meetups aren't isolated but they're a network of them. Those, yeah. Those. By the way, I put on the uh, chat for whoever is not familiar with this, this is issue forty. So uh, again. Uh, Matt, you know that, but for whoever wants to contribute to the uh, thought process around how to build up this meetup, by the way, I put I posted a question there maybe to uh, understand the scope and if you want to uh, have it as designated meetups or to so somehow create a facilitation to team up with existing, for example, local CNCF chapters. Uh, for I, I, for one, uh, am a co-organizer of a local CNCF chapter uh, in uh, Tel Aviv. I'm best uh, in Tel Aviv and that's where I run it. Uh, so I'm just wondering if the scope uh, or the mandate that you want to give this uh, uh, topic is to create designated uh, activities or actually create an add-on sort of uh, facilitation also to plug into existing uh, meetup groups. Because from my experience with communities, it's very, the, the hard part is to ramp up, to, to build up a new community. Uh, and if we can plug into existing local uh, chapters that make the, the, the onboarding uh, much easier. Again, we can take it offline and discuss it over the GitHub, of course, uh, GitHub issue, but uh, just uh, in, in that context, want to bring it up. No, that's great. Um, and in fact, I'm going to, I just went back about five months or so um, in the document, and I had written up back then a lot of these things uh, in a more human readable format, and I'll just tack it into the notes again. Um, there. Great. Uh, Thanks. Right. Um, so those, th th again, th there's been additional ones added, but um, that's a, a sort of a, a high level look at, you know, some of the things that, that are actionable now. Um, and some of them are, are fairly low hanging fruit and you could, um, yeah, you could have a hand in, 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 in defining the look and feel, for example, of, you know, we could, we could have a site for the tag, which we don't have yet. Um, I mentioned that the glossary project is another one. Um, the last thing I'll mention, and, and we've been talking about it in the Observe K8's context, but really should cleave it out to its own issue. But, um, and I think I've covered it before, so I'll be brief, but you know, one of the things we wanna get out of an interaction with tag uh, app deploy uh, is to really, is to propose, and, and I've shopped around the idea uh, with various folks uh, at the TLC, as well as, um, in, app, in the GitOps working group, uh, Scott being one of them. Uh, but we could really use an open standard, kind of like open metrics, you know, and 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 common formats, you know, hotel formats and, and things like that. That's really fostered an ecosystem of vendors that provide a lot of value and it's, and it, and it's really been growing quite quickly. Uh, what we don't have is like a, a, an open standard for the data format for recording, or for reporting on, um, you know, stateful changes made to deployments. So like how, you know, if we want to build common observability tooling or if vendors want to build differentiated, um, and I think they would, differentiated, um, you know, solutions and user interfaces and ways to visualize and correlate, you know, what changed, you know, particularly for GitOps style deployments with what is observed, <laughs> you know, an open standard there, I, I feel is a gap, um, you know, where, we don't want to have a, a bifurcation or a tri trifurcation, uh, <laughs> enfurcation. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to have like you know all the a whole bunch of different ways to just report. You know, this commit caused this thing to be built that got deployed to this cluster, right? Uh, so I think that's an example of like low hanging fruit where the two tags could could come together and and have an open process. And that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today. But, We'll talk about on the 21st about like how would we do that right in a way that is inclusive open and is not you know a couple of very interested people uh from from particular vendors say uh you know just slamming through you know the standard but it really needs to be a community accepted standard or it won't work so um i think there's a lot of opportunity not only for 
you know, social media and, and things like that, but but actually to, to move the needle forward on these emerging or emerged, I'll say, but quickly, quickly growing um, scenarios. I have a yeah, question. Yeah. Um, so I'm part of the Open Network User Group, ONET, and they came up with something called CSNF. I forgot all the acronyms stand for, but basically it's a decorator framework for messages so that it can be formatted post-generation so that it can be part, it could conform to the format of an enterprise or a vendor or application is uh, for observability, obviously, uh, security tagging. So I'm wondering if that's something that would be appropriate to this forum. So instead of having, you know, uh, events generated in a certain format or common standard, which we seem like we're still working toward, we there's a decorator framework that will take the events and reformat it in the right, quote unquote, right or needed uh, format mm -hmm. so that it can be consumed by different observability frameworks or application. Yeah. Uh, are you talking about OpenNetworking.org? Sorry, you're cutting out. Uh, are you talking about Open you're, Network? You're cutting out, sorry. Please repeat. Are you talking about OpenNetworking.org? I hear Open Network. I, I no, hear no, fine. I think network. maybe it's a communication issue on, on uh, yeah, let me two voices. Pause. If I'm understanding uh, how you described it correctly, then yes, that that's very much in scope. I mean, if you're if you're tagging network packets or requests with metadata, um, specifically meant for observability tooling to leverage, uh, yeah, if it's if it's if it's open source, you know, again, um, whether or not uh, open source projects are in the CNCF formally or not. Uh, they are still in scope. And, and one of the purposes of, of the technical advisory group on observability in this case, uh, one of the primary missions for it is to provide um, guidance and, 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 and to, to the TOC, the technical oversight committee uh, and the broader community to say, hey, these are gaps or these are projects that you know, might benefit from you know, either interoperating with uh, open standards that are come out of the CNCF or in joining the CNCF uh, as a project. So um, if you'd like to come talk about it at a future meeting uh, uh, or, or we have another 10, five, six minutes now, um, uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely in scope. Um, I've, I've not heard of it before. Uh, I'll put it in the notes though. Uh, and if, you, if you'd like to, to give a little talk about it, that, that'd be cool. Uh, the format we've done in the past is like, you know, roughly, you know, 15 minutes um, uh, for, for various projects like this, where, you know, you talk for five or six minutes, you know, with a slide or two or not, uh, and then and then just have some discussion um, and see where, see where things land. Yeah, I'm not the owner of the, not the owner, the, the lead developer. So mm -hmm. I'll mention it to him and invite him to the next meeting. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's patchy too. <laughs> so, um, cool. That's good. Uh, I'll give this a read. Thank you for um, thanks for bringing it uh, to the meeting here. Um, Not a problem. I'm just trying to figure out correlation. That's all. No, no, no yeah, great. 
By the way, Matt, I think we should uh, clarify. It doesn't have to be the formal, you know, owner or, or master uh, maintainer. If you feel, uh, you know, if, if you're up to speed to give a brief overview, 15 minutes overview, and you feel comfortable with that, obviously, if, if the, the, the a more senior person is uh, eager to come and speak. It's fine. If not, again, for at least for for a brief intro, feel free, feel comfortable to to do it yourself. And if we see that there is a need, uh, we can definitely take a, a follow up and then maybe invite a more uh, a focused forum to to follow up. So just yeah, I mean, we've yeah. kind of um, I, I, we've had a lot of people join and 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 chat or listen over the last year and a half or so. But I think now that We've sort of been established as a as an actual tag. You know, we've done some good things. Uh, there's so much more we can do. Uh, really, the model is that tags or technical advisory groups spawn working groups, and working groups have um, just a couple of things that make them a working group. One is that they're time bounded. Uh, you know, there's artifacts that are agreed to beforehand that come out of it, and that TOC approves the formation of a working group. Uh, so a lot of this stuff is meant to be done asynchronously and, and this meeting can be more like you know part scrum you know or part stand up if you will right at where these various working groups can can report back um i think that this time of year in particular where we've had kubecon and then reinvent and about four or five other conferences uh that i forget the name of and then we come into thanksgiving and christmas it's called it's sort of a lull you know but i, I think that um uh, when I was at Microsoft, we used to say when the market's in a lull, right, or when the economy is, is a little bit down, that's the time to double down and do research, do incubation and all of that so that when activity picks back up broadly, uh, you know, you've got well-formed programs and, and projects to, to, to attract contributors as well as, well, in that case, dollars. Um, you know, so I think the same. Uh, another, sorry, another question? Yeah. Um, have you guys thought about observability, you know, event notification all the way down to the the hardware, firmware level? So it's not just software observability, but. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know if anybody else wants to jump in, but I'll say, I'll say briefly, I think that, you know, a lot, you know, the white paper covers this, but we kind of think of observability as a set of signals, you know, things that happened, one of which is events or blogs, depending on, you know, how you how you consider them yeah. or bucket them and, and traces and other things. But um, obviously, uh, all of the data that's been made accessible through eBPF uh, based mechanisms, mm -hmm. uh, as well as lots of other, uh, for example, Prometheus exporters that interface with various appliances and pieces of hardware and provide telemetry and metrics to them. That's all very much, yes. I mean, part of, part of observability. Within the scope of this group. Cool. Yeah. I, I need to go to the white paper. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, that's a great place to start, or we, we can we can we can talk in Slack as well. I want to be respectful of calendars. We've only got about 90 seconds before uh, the meeting's technically over, and I think another two or three minutes before Zoom just goes. So, um, <laughs> no worries. but yeah, um, please, please join us in Slack. Uh, or on the mailing list. Um, and I, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I will, I will, thank you. Super, and thank you for joining and um, and providing a link to this. This is new to me at least. No worries. Well, for not having a specific agenda, <laughs> we built some time. Um, so, so thanks for all the comments and um, yeah, I'll see you next time or online. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you everyone, thank you, Matt. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.